If you work for an organization that serves older adults or individuals with life-limiting illnesses, the community you serve includes lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender or LGBT individuals. We hope that this program will prepare you to understand the basic concepts regarding LGBT aging and end-of-life care, identify the stresses and strengths that come with the journey to older adulthood among LGBT individuals, describe the causes and effects of LGBT invisibility and lack of recognition, identify common fears and concerns of LGBT individuals, Assess your hospice or healthcare organization's current policies and practices to allow you to find opportunities for including and providing service to LGBT individuals. Aging and death don't discriminate. Everyone ages, whether you are heterosexual, gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender. You grow older every year you're alive. Although some of us will die before we are considered to be older adults, Others of us will live well into our 70s, 80s, even our 90s. Our physical bodies may age, but inside, our sexual orientation and gender identity remains intact. People are more alike than different. Most people want to grow older comfortably, have their wishes honored if they become ill, and be treated with dignity and respect as they face the end of life. Yet LGBT individuals face unique challenges as they age and cope with life-limiting illnesses, challenges that make it difficult for many to seek, access, and receive quality care and services. Before we begin to explore the issues faced by LGBT older adults and those with life-limiting illnesses, let's take a minute to define the terms we will be using today. The term LGBT is an abbreviation for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender. The term LGBT community is a shorthand reference to the many communities to which LGBT individuals belong. LGBT individuals belong to many different communities, just as heterosexual individuals belong to multiple communities. The term LGBT can be a bit confusing because it is so broad. The L, G, and B refer to sexual orientation, while the T refers to gender identity. Let's take a closer look at sexual orientation and gender identity. Sexual orientation refers to a person's emotional, romantic, and sexual attraction to other individuals. People whose emotional, romantic, and sexual attraction is to persons of the other gender are called heterosexual. Lesbian, gay, and bisexual, or LGB individuals, are those whose sexual orientation is something other than heterosexual. Lesbians are women who have an emotional, romantic, and sexual attraction to women. Gay men are men who have an emotional, romantic, and sexual attraction to men. Bisexual individuals have an emotional, romantic, and sexual attraction to persons of both genders. In the term LGBT, the T refers to gender identity. Gender identity is our internal sense of being male or female. For most people, their gender identity matches the gender assigned to them at birth. A person labeled a boy at birth usually grows up feeling he is male. For transgender individuals, the gender assigned to them at birth doesn't match their internal sense of being male or female. A boy may grow up feeling like a girl, but society views them as being male. Transgender individuals sometimes use clothing or, in some cases, surgery to make their appearance match their identity. However, this is not always the case. In terms of their sexual orientation, transgender individuals may be heterosexual, gay, lesbian, or bisexual. Let's take a quick look at the statistics about the LGBT older adult population in the United States. While no definitive data exists regarding the exact number, estimates based on federal statistics put the number of LGBT older adults in the United States between 2 million and 7 million. LGBT individuals live in all communities across the United States, in small towns, big cities, mid-sized suburbs, and rural areas. There are LGBT individuals within every racial and ethnic group, educational level, religion, and socioeconomic level. 
Like heterosexuals, LGBT older adults live in their own homes, either alone or with partners, friends, or family, in assisted living facilities, in long-term care facilities, and in some cases, on the street. In short, LGBT elders are as diverse a population as the population of the United States. As we talk about LGBT older adults, you may be feeling a bit uncomfortable about the topic because of your own personal or religious beliefs. You have a right to those convictions and beliefs regarding homosexuality, and those will be respected throughout this discussion. Our focus here is not on whether homosexuality is right or wrong. Regardless of your beliefs about homosexuality, most health care providers and social service providers can agree on four key statements. One, heterosexuals and LGBT persons are human beings. Two, hospitals, hospices, nursing homes, and aging service providers are charged with the task of providing care for human beings. Three, all human beings have the right to live their lives safe from physical harm, to receive necessary health care and social services, and to be treated with dignity and respect by those entrusted to provide their care. And, four, all human beings deserve compassionate care delivered in a manner that is respectful of their personhood, their personal definition of family, and their wishes. Most health care and social service providers want to provide high-quality care to LGBT individuals. They just don't know where to start. First, it's important to get an understanding of the LGBT journey to older adulthood. Understanding these experiences will help you and your organization meet aging LGBT individuals where they are in terms of their needs, fears, and strengths. For LGBT individuals, the journey to older adulthood is a rocky one. LGBT older adults experience challenges at almost every level. These challenges may include housing and job discrimination, verbal and physical abuse, intolerant marriage and adoption laws, family, religious, and societal disdain. Few words describe LGBT older adults better than the word resilient. A 75-year-old LGBT person has lived through an astonishing number of historical events, conveying society's scorn for LGBT people. LGBT older adults have spent a lifetime dealing with the fact that they could legally be fired from their jobs, banned from service in the military, evicted from their homes, arrested, imprisoned, institutionalized, and subjected to electroshock therapy. Given these experiences during their journey to older adulthood, it is not surprising that older LGBT individuals may feel reluctant to seek and accept health care and social services. In light of these tremendous challenges, the resilience of LGBT older adults is particularly impressive. LGBT older adults have spent a lifetime creating loving families of choice, building strength and resilience, developing caring communities, and bravely making a path where there wasn't one before. Like all older adults, LGBT seniors want to be treated with dignity and respect, have access to quality health care and social services, give and receive love, spend time with selected family and friends, and be recognized as a person with something to contribute. Unfortunately, LGBT older adults may run into barriers getting these basic needs met because of lack of recognition by society, service providers, and families of origin. Why do we talk about invisibility and lack of recognition in relation to LGBT seniors, especially those with life-limiting illnesses? Lack of recognition by society has a profound effect on LGBT seniors. In general, society tends to devalue the contributions of older adults, and assumptions are often made in our society. For instance, many people assume that everyone is heterosexual. The result is that LGBT older adults are often invisible. Because of this invisibility, LGBT seniors may be afraid to access services. They may not share who they are with their care providers. They may grieve in silence and alone rather than seek out support when a partner dies, and they may die without receiving the services they need and deserve at the end of life. Lack of recognition by the government also shapes the experience of LGBT individuals as they age. 
LGBT individuals in same-gender relationships are ineligible for Social Security survivor benefits made available to married couples are heavily taxed on 401k or IRAs they inherit from their partners, are charged an estate tax on the inheritance of a jointly owned home, and are at significant risk of losing their home when their partner enters a nursing home, because federal Medicaid law only allows a married spouse to remain in a jointly owned home. Because of this lack of recognition, partnered LGBT seniors must go to greater lengths and greater expense to protect their assets than heterosexual couples. In addition to taking extra steps to protect their assets, LGBT seniors must ensure that health care decision-making will be carried out by the person they choose should they become unable to make decisions for themselves. When a person has not completed a state-recognized advance directive naming a health care surrogate, the closest adult biological relative often becomes the person who makes the decisions. For many LGBT individuals, this may not be the person they would choose to make decisions for them. Lack of recognition of LGBT older adults on the part of service providers goes beyond issues pertaining to health care decision-making. Invisibility is incompatible with client-centered care. When service providers assume that every patient is heterosexual, LGBT seniors are put in the uncomfortable position of having to decide whether it is safe for them to come out to the service provider. Because of past experiences, these seniors may decide to remain closeted and hide the fact that they are LGBT. Another place where older LGBT adults experience a lack of recognition may be within their own family, in what is called the family of origin. Everyone has two families. The first is the family they are born or adopted into. This is what we refer to as their family of origin. A person's family of origin includes siblings, parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles. The second type of family is made up of those whom a person has chosen as their family of choice. A person's family of choice may include partners, friends, neighbors, co-workers, or members of a person's faith community. While many families of origin are accepting and supportive of their LGBT family members, this is not always the case. Some families reject and may even sever all ties with the LGBT individual. For some LGBT seniors, this conflict with their family of origin may cause issues at the end of life with decisions about health care, finances, even funeral planning. Family members who severed ties with the LGBT individual 30 or 40 years ago may suddenly want control over the LGBT seniors' assets and health care decision-making. For transgender seniors, their family of origin may not acknowledge them as the person they now are, and instead may insist on continuing to refer to the trans person by their birth name or by the gender assigned to them at birth. Dealing with death is difficult enough without the added stress that comes when there is conflict about health care decision-making and funeral planning. If a dying person had not made his or her wishes clear, Healthcare providers will most likely turn to biological family members to make decisions. Advanced directives are an essential tool for anyone who hopes to prevent family conflict at the end of life, but can be especially helpful for LGBT seniors. Pre-planning of funeral, burial, or cremation services helps to reduce conflict over the LGBT individual after their death. Because of how discrimination, invisibility, and lack of recognition affect older LGBT adults, many LGBT seniors have fears and concerns about accessing health care and social services. LGBT older adults find themselves silently struggling with a number of questions as they consider approaching a service provider. Will you discriminate against me? Will you judge me? Will you tell my family, co-workers, employer, faith community that I'm lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender? Will you reject me? Will you hurt or abuse me? If LGBT older adults don't see themselves reflected in your organization's brochure, website, intake procedures, staff composition, or non-discrimination statement, they may wonder, will we be welcome here? Ideally, 
All agencies would have inclusive admissions and intake questions and processes. Everyone would recognize that LGBT older adults deserve to be treated with dignity, respect, and compassion. LGBT older adults would have access to high-quality end-of-life care, as well as grief and bereavement services. The death of same-gender partners would be acknowledged as equal to the loss of a heterosexual spouse. All health care and social service organizations would welcome LGBT persons with open arms. And nursing homes, hospitals, assisted living facilities, and hospice residences would be fully compatible with LGBT residents and would work diligently to make LGBT persons feel safe, accepted, and valued, and to be sure that all couples have the privacy they are entitled to as adults. But it's not a perfect world. Yet. Let's talk about how you and your organization can take steps towards creating that world. We've talked about the ways in which healthcare and social service providers may unintentionally put up barriers to LGBT individuals. Let's look at some ways that organizations can remove those barriers and instead build bridges to provide the best support possible for LGBT individuals. While these suggestions are primarily for people working in a healthcare organization, they can also be applied to other businesses, faith communities, or social groups. The first step along the path to inclusion involves making a personal commitment to make change happen. Each person listening today can be a catalyst for change, to increase visibility, access, and services for LGBT older adults and those with life-limiting illnesses. The second step along the path to inclusion involves taking an honest look at your own personal assumptions and biases. Everyone makes assumptions, and it's important to take a close look at some common assumptions about LGBT individuals. Do you assume someone is heterosexual unless they tell you otherwise? Do you think you can tell when someone is gay based on their appearance? Do you think LGBT people are too outspoken about wanting equal rights? Making change at your organization or in your community will be difficult if you are unable to take an honest look at your own assumptions and biases. A willingness to acknowledge that you make assumptions is essential to the change process. The third step along the path to inclusion involves examining your organization's employee orientation and training programs. Ask yourself, do staff members receive comprehensive training on LGBT issues as well as on the unique needs of older LGBT persons? Are new employees made aware of agency policies and procedures regarding transgender clients? For example, policies regarding roommate assignments in residential facilities. During staff orientation, how does your agency address the issue of homophobic or transphobic jokes in the workplace? If your agency doesn't provide orientation and training to staff regarding LGBT issues, how will LGBT seniors feel safe seeking out your agency's services? A commitment to ensuring that staff are oriented and trained appropriately will go a long way towards creating an environment that's safer and more welcoming to LGBT seniors. The fourth step along the path to inclusion involves examining your organization's non-discrimination statement. Does your agency have a non-discrimination statement that includes sexual orientation and gender identity? If your agency is unwilling to include sexual orientation, gender identity, and gender expression in its non-discrimination statement, how will LGBT seniors feel safe seeking out your agency's services? By adding these components to its non-discrimination statement, your organization will be able to convey to LGBT seniors that they will be treated with dignity and respect. The fifth step along the path to inclusion involves examining your agency's employee benefits. Does your agency offer domestic partnership benefits, such as medical and dental benefits, to the same gender partners of employees? Are these benefits fully equivalent to the benefits received by an employee married to someone of the other gender? Are same-gender partners of employees eligible to receive their pension if the employee dies? Does your agency offer bereavement leave to employees who experience the death of a spouse? 
If so, is bereavement leave offered to employees who experience the death of a same-gender partner? Does your agency have staff members and board members who openly identify as lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender? If your agency isn't a welcoming and safe place for LGBT staff and board members, how will LGBT seniors feel safe seeking out your agency services? By creating a workplace environment that welcomes, values, and respects LGBT employees and board members, your organization will be taking an important step towards creating an environment that welcomes, values, and respects LGBT seniors who seek out your services. The sixth step along the path to inclusion involves examining the ways in which your organization reaches out to LGBT seniors. Look at your website and brochures. Do your promotional materials include photos of same-gender couples or just photos of male-female couples? Where does your agency spend its time in advertising dollars? Do you advertise in local LGBT newspapers? Are you at the Martin Luther King Annual Parade, but not at the Pride Festival? Does your agency offer HIV and AIDS-related services in the community? And consider that to be your organization's primary way of serving LGBT seniors. What does your organization do for the vast majority of LGBT seniors? those who don't have HIV AIDS. If your agency's marketing and community outreach efforts don't convey an openness to and interest in serving LGBT seniors, how will these seniors feel safe seeking out your agency's services? By reaching out to LGBT seniors in your community outreach and marketing efforts, your agency will be taking another step towards welcoming LGBT seniors to seek and accept the valuable services you have to offer them. The path to inclusion is not a typical road with a beginning and an end. The path is usually a circular one that your organization will need to travel for months and years to come. Creating a welcoming and inclusive organization that provides high-quality services to LGBT seniors requires an ongoing commitment to reassess and strengthen your organization's policies, programs, services, and outreach efforts. The path is a never-ending one, but it is a path well worth traveling, strengthening your organization as a whole each step along the way. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this program. If you want to learn more about hospice care and the Medicare hospice benefit, We've developed an online tutorial called Understanding Hospice. You can access this tutorial and others on the subjects of hospice and end-of-life care at the Hospice Information Center, www.hospicefoundation.org slash infocenter. We hope you've gained some knowledge and skills that can serve as a catalyst for institutional change in your community increasing visibility, access, and services for LGBT older adults and those with life-limiting illnesses. Aging and End-of-Life Challenges in the LGBT Community was written by Kimberly Aquaviva. Additional support was provided by Amy Tucci, President and CEO of the Hospice Foundation of America, HFA, as well as by Karen Walsh, HFA Social Worker, and Lindsay Curran. Our director and CMS webinar project manager is Lisa McGahee-Veglin, program officer at HFA. For more information on hospice care, grief and loss, caregiving and end-of-life issues, please visit the Hospice Foundation of America website at www.hospicefoundation.org or call toll-free 1-800-854-3402. This program was provided through the support of a grant from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, to support hospice and end-of-life care outreach and education. CMS funds of $571,000 with HFA in-kind services of $5,710 are funding a variety of outreach and educational programs, including this tutorial. I'm Roberta Solomon. Thank you for joining us.